Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and I too, and today we're going to take a look at the Thermaltake Contact Silent 12. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we're going to take a look at the Thermaltake Contact 12. This is a 120mm tower cooler, four heat pipes, and this comes in at a great price at the moment in the UK, looking just under £22, which actually is really good value for money. Now this puts it in direct competition of things like the Arctic Freezer 34, the Coolermaster Evo 212, all those kinds of tower coolers. Also uh, the Gamax 400, which is essentially the same cooler, although with a few little different tweaks. But anyway, let's take a look at the box and then we'll open it up, have a look, and I'll give you my thoughts on it. So first of all, from the packaging, as you can see, this is a Contact Silent 12 CPU cooler, AM4 supported, and it's got a PWM fan, and it's got the measurements 120 by 120 by 25 mil on the fan, and it's got a low noise function. Also included to support the low noise function is a low noise cable. So this is an additional PWM cable, which actually just reduces the voltage. So it gives you about 25% or more off of the total RPMs and also obviously the noise as well. So if you're building, say, a media center PC or something that just needs to be very, very quiet, this is definitely gonna be on your list. So looking on the back of the box, so we've got some of our features. So it features four times uh, 0.6 mil high performance U-shaped copper heat pipes, and it supports CPUs up to a wattage of about 150 watts. High airflow design for air cooling and a long life hydraulic bearing for reliable and silent operation. Heatsink with uh, 0.4mm aluminium fins provide best heatsink dissipation and the tower side flow design optimizes cooling performance. The all-in-one backplate design offers universal Intel and AMD socket compatibility. So that all sounds well and good and if you want to take a, look, a close look at the specifications then I'll put those on the screen for you now to so have a look at. But essentially this is pretty much your basic 120mm tower cooler. But some of the features of this, which I particularly like, which we'll go into more when I actually open the box, the ease of fitting. Now this is a super, super simple cooler to fit. Now a lot of coolers these days on the market, you have to replace the back plate on your motherboard, you have to put different pillars on, and you get a whole host of different pillars and clips and all those kinds of things, and it can be a real pain. And quite often I get people putting in the comment section, I've bought the cooler and I can't get it to fit because X, Y, Z, etc., etc. It can be an absolute pain. But this cooler actually takes away most of the guesswork and actually makes life a lot, lot simpler. So let's take out the box and see what we actually get. So first of all, we get our accessories box, which we'll, uh, we'll take a quick look at now. So in this, we get our warranty guide. We get the Intel fitting ring, get two spring clips and some mounting pins and also there's a sachet of thermal paste to use. And also we have a illustrated guide of how to set up the cooler with various systems. So we open this right up, very much like thermal takes usual stuff. You normally get Intel on one side, flip it around, and then you get your AMD instructions. So all well and good there. Next up, we get the tower assembly itself. And as you can see, this is finished in the kind of the, the base bare metal. So if you like that kind of chrome look, then this is definitely up your street. Although if you do want it to be a little bit more stealthy, there's no reason why you couldn't get yourself a matte black paint and give it a quick blast over. Although that will raise your temperatures very, very slightly. So uh, if you do want a matte black cooler, then you might be better off just going off and buying a matte black cooler straight away. But for those of you who like to tinker and have a mod, then there's no reason why you can't uh, coat this bottom section and give it a quick blast. But this is a very really nice design. So the actual the fins themselves are very nicely spaced. So that's gonna allow airflow to get through very quickly with very minimal resistance. You do find a lot of these coolers now, they tend to be really densely packed with fins, which actually makes it quite difficult for air to pass through unless you're using a specific pressure optimized fan. But for this particular case, because the fins are quite nicely spread out, it's gonna make it nice and easy for the air to pass through even at low RPMs. As we spoke about already, so you've got four U-shaped heat pipes and also these are finished off on the bottom. Now actually, I'm gonna peel this off now so you can actually see some of it. But the actual, the finish on the bottom of this cooler is so smooth, it's ridiculous. It's been very, very well machined, very well lapped. And as you can see, the heat pipes there, the copper elements are actually completely exposed. 
So you're gonna get thermal transfer straight from your heat spreader, straight to the cooler, and this is gonna work really well. Obviously, there's gonna be fractional difference between kind of exposed pipes and non-exposed pipes, but essentially this is ticking all the right boxes at the moment. It's doing everything it should do. Nice wide fins, lots of it, easy airflow, really good contact points with the copper, fantastic. Also, what we've got is this cutout section, they like the L shape on each side. So this is gonna give you a little bit more flexibility when it actually comes to mounting it, because these are using like a pressure-based system, so a little bit easier to get to. And also, it's gonna be easier if you've got certain heat sinks on your motherboard, VRM heat sinks, all that kind of thing. Now, at the moment in the box, it comes already equipped with the AM4 and AM3 type mountings. If you do wanna change that, all you have to do is undo the screws on each side. You can remove that plate, and then you can go to work with your Intel fit-in. But being as pretty much AMD is ruling the waves at the moment, we're not gonna get too involved with the Intel fit-ins. So next up in the box is the fan itself for the cooling. So like I said, 120 mil fan, and you've got a PWM connector on there. I was just thinking then, I was talking about the PWM connector. There is also another additional PWM connector as we discussed a little bit earlier. So this is the voltage reducing one or fan speed reducing one. So this will reduce about 25%, like I said, off the RPMs and the power. So if you wanna keep it even quieter than it is anyway, then you can use this as well. The fan itself has got quite nice blades to it and the blades themselves have got a little bit of an angled subsection on the blade fins themselves, which hopefully you can see there in the close-ups. Uh, this apparently is supposed to make the blades quieter in rotation, keep noise down and be more efficient, all that kind of stuff. And being that it's thermal take, I've got no reason to doubt that. The cable itself is nicely uh, sleeved in this kind of rubberized sleeve, keeping the uh, kind of ketchupy and mustardy cables out of harm's way. Unfortunately, some fans still do have this kind of color coding, the black, the yellow, green, and the blue, as is the standard connections for PWM but it's nice to see that they've actually sleeved it so it doesn't stand out a mile. And also the sleeving goes pretty much all the way up to the actual PWM connector, so you're not gonna have too much unsightly cable work. So let's get down to the real meat and potatoes of this. The reason why I particularly like this cooler is the fan mounting system. Now there's a lot of systems where you have to kind of stretch things around or put pins in or slide box over. This is actually really nice and simple. All you have are these two metal springs and they're very well hooked. In fact, so well hooked that they're sticking together. But all you need to do is, with the fan, just hook on each side, and then the section at the side there clips around the side of the tower. Now the tower actually, you can use this in either direction. So depending on your setup, it, there is actually a thermal tape logo on the top. So if you wanted it in a certain direction, then you can turn it around 180 degrees and do whichever you choose. Personally, I would say because of the mounting system, this is a spring clip. So ideally you want this clip at the top of your motherboard section, allowing you some nice easy access to this thumb push at the bottom for mounting. So if you have the thumb push towards the lower part of your motherboard uh, with the thermal tape logo shown as it is now in the picture, this is gonna make fitting it a lot easier. Also, when it comes to fitting it, you can, because this section here is kind of less springy or not as springy, or it doesn't need springing as much, you can hook that over the top clip on your motherboard, let the CPU hang, or let the cooler hang rather, and then apply force to the bottom to stretch it round. Now, when you're actually installing this, you do require some force to actually get it to fit on the board, but then that is a good thing because you've got really good compression against that heatsink spreader on the top of your CPU, so you're gonna get a really good contact. I did watch a video of someone else installing this and they were really kind of quite squeamish about it. But as long as you do it on a stable setting or with a motherboard led down or the case led down, you shouldn't have any problems at all. This metal here is designed to spring. It's very kind of strong, but it also does allow it to flex. So that is where your spring retention is. Anyway, let's put the fan on so you can see how easy it can be to do that. So with the, uh, the cable coming out of the bottom, Put your fan clip on the side, hold the fan in place, and it just spring clips over the side. So the spring holds on the side, and also because it is a spring clip, you've got a lot of adjustment there. So if there is some ram at the bottom, which is getting in the way, you can literally just slide the fan or move the fan upwards. So I'm gonna go ahead now and put the, uh, the other side on now. So again, really nice and simple. Just hook those into the holes of the fan, and then you can stretch that over the side and it clips in really nicely. Now again, because this setup is so easy to do and the spring clips are pretty much universal, 
if for some reason you decide the thermal tape fan isn't for you and you don't like maybe the white blades on it, then you can change the fan out for another 120 mil fan. So if you wanted to use maybe a Noctua fan or an Arctic cooling fan or whatever it may be, the choice is entirely up to you. Now, unfortunately, which is one thing I, I did find a little bit of a disappointment on this cooler other than the Game Max 400, you don't actually get an additional set of clips installed. So you, if you wanted to mount an additional fan on the back to give you a push-pull configuration, unfortunately, you don't supply the, uh, the spring clips straight out of the box, which is a little bit disappointing. But I would imagine if you, uh, if you reached out to Thermaltake, there's a strong possibility they would send them to you for a very nominal cost, if not for free, as part of their customer service. But essentially, out of the box, for just about £20 or £22 I think I paid, I think this is a really good cooler. I've actually mounted it already onto a uh, Ryzen 5 2600 on an MSI motherboard on an open air platform just to see how easy it was to fit and to make sure it actually met to my expectations of how I thought it would fit. And it actually worked out really well. The ambient temperature in the room was about 24 degrees and I was registering windows idling around about 35, 36 degrees. So about 10 degrees, nine degrees over ambient, which I think is actually pretty good. And that was before I actually did any uh, adjustments in the BIOS for fan settings, etc and also without using the fan noise reducing element, which I guess would have increased the CPU temperature a little bit, but would have decreased noise. Now, speaking of noise, I could barely hear it. I had a power supply next to me, powering up the motherboard, all on an open air setup, and the power supply fan was actually a little bit noisier than the fan on here. Again, this was under idle. I haven't done full testing on that. I will be doing testing, which if you do want to find out how that goes, feel free to click the subscribe button and the chime icon, and you can find out how all that goes. Also, we'll be doing a live build uh, in conjunction with the Silverstone Fire Case we're using this cooler and the MSI B450 Gaming Plus Max motherboard. So if you want to check out again, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified of all future video releases. But essentially to wrap up, I think this is a great cooler. It ticks a lot of boxes, nice and easy installation, very straightforward, very simple, flexibility especially if you've got those larger RAM modules and you want to move the fan up a little bit just so you've got a little bit of clearance room there, it does tick a lot of boxes. It previously, when I did the review, the Evo 212 versus the Gamax 400, I said either one of them are absolutely fine depending on what you need. Uh, the Gamax 400 has also been very, very popular. And this is basically the very, very same design or very similar design, albeit with a different fan and without any LEDs or RGBs. I think this is well worth a look. So I'll put some links in the description below so you can check it out for yourself and prices local to where you are. But I think this is definitely worth a look. So this has been the Thermal Take Contact Silent 12. I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.